God has commissioned Pastor Vera or Robert to preach the word of faith, ushering people into the life of limitless abundance. Get ready for an encounter that will enable you to obtain all of God's blessings for your Praise life. Praise the Lord this morning. Our God is good. All the time. We really want to give God praise for this month of May. This is the fifth um, women's breakfast meeting for the year. And we are grateful to the Lord for how he has helped us since the beginning of the year till this time. One of the things that, you know, makes it uh, a burden over and over again is the burden that God has placed on my heart concerning women and what um, the challenges we face as women and how God wants us to handle those challenges in our lives. You know, when I was listening to my sister, I was just shaking my head. We were sharing about how she couldn't breathe. You know, if somebody has been a Christian for a year, two years, three years, and a challenge came, oh, I was so afraid. I was so afraid. I was so... You need to step up. You need to step up in your faith. You need to step up in your faith. Because you are a single girl now, you are going to get married, you are going to face challenges. And if you are going to face challenges, you do, oh, I was just so afraid. I can't go meet this pastor. I can't go meet this pastor. That's why prophets are thriving. Because there are so many women who will not step up to their game. They will not step up in building their faith. Not step up in building the, 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 what will make them succeed in life. And so, uh, probably, I guess, that testimony is a build up to what we want to really talk to ourselves about today. They need to take time to really step up. In looking at that topic, you can look at it from many angles, but there's an angle that the Holy Spirit really laid upon my heart. You know, in Proverbs chapter 4, the Bible says, The path of the just is as a shining light, it gets brighter and brighter unto the perfect dawn. So, God wants our lives to get brighter and brighter. He wants our faith to get stronger and stronger. He wants us to keep stepping up to new heights, to new realms. God doesn't want us to be at one point. Smith Wigglesworth, a great man of God in, in Britain, used to say that if your faith is where it was yesterday, it's still the same today, you're already backsliding. It means that every day, every year, there has to be a forward movement. There has to be a growth. There has to be increase. I have four children, been married for the past 29 years. There are challenges in life. There are challenges in your job. There are challenges, in your, even if it's not your personal, your nuclear family. There are challenges to, to be dealt with. And one of the things that God desires is that you step up. You step up because you have just one life to live. And you must live it to the maximum. You must live it to the limits. You must live it to the very height that God has desired. Please help me tell the sister sitting next to you. Say, you need to step up. Tell them one more time. You need to step up. I'd like to read Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Verse 1. After this I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. We said, come up hither. And I will show you things which must be hereafter. He said, afterwards, I looked, I looked, and I saw a door opened in heaven. In other words, if he hadn't looked, he wouldn't have seen that door opened in heaven. The door was open, but he couldn't see it until he took time to look. There are dimensions we cannot walk in until we take time to settle down to look. He said, I looked and I saw a door opened in heaven. And a voice began to speak to me when he saw that door open. I'm just praying for you that this month of May, God will move you to look. And as you look, you will see that door opened in heaven. Door of increase, door of favor, all kinds of doors that God wants to open. But until we look, we may not see it. He said, when I looked, the door was open. And then a voice started speaking to me. And the voice said, come up, step up, step up, step up. Anytime God wants to begin to do something new in the life of a Christian, one of the things he does is to make the person step up. 
Step up, step up, step up, step up. What I want to talk to you this, about this morning, I'm not going to take a very long time, but it's something that is very, very important. The need for each one of us to take personal responsibility to step up. To step up. You know, when I gave my life to Christ, yesterday made it 33 years since I gave my life to Christ. Amen. Now, when I gave my life to Christ, one of the things that I determined is that if this Christianity is real, then I really want the fullness of what it carries. It, I want the fullness of what it carries. I made up my mind that the kind of testimony this sister came to share, I will never share that kind of... As it called her, I call the fear, I call the fear, I call the fear, I call the fear. I said, I don't want to share that kind of testimony. That's what made people run up and down, needlessly getting it. You don't know how many girls have come to meet me. They went to meet prophet. There's a girl that went to meet prophet because of marriage. Because she couldn't pray by herself. Traveled all the way to meet prophet. And this is an educated lawyer, this, this uh, uh, lady. Not a small girl. The prophet said, okay, come tomorrow. The Lord has shown me your problem, that the problem is in your private part. I will, I will anoint your private part then you will have a husband who cast out the demon so they agreed for the next day the pro- she went to meet the prophet she really went and this was a big woman in our church that time even though she wasn't married went to meet the prophet fortunately for her that night her period started as she got there she told the prophet that ah man of God the prophet said they should go inside he said my period started he said if you see the anger of the man the anger was too much that was when she came to her senses that how can this man be so angry? If it is me that has the problem, this is anger, does not make sense. Then he now dawned on her that the issue was not anointing to cast away anything. And that was how she came back and started telling us what had transpired. You find out that you become open to all kinds of things if you are not going to take the step to do what you must as a woman. For those of us that are already married, challenges with your marriage, challenges with your husband, challenges with children, challenges sometimes with health, challenges with finance, all kinds of challenges will come. And one of the things that you must make up your mind is that I need to step up. I need to step up. I need to step up. So I'm talking today about stepping up spiritually. Stepping up in your walk with God. Stepping up in your walk with God. Stepping up in knowing how to handle issues spiritually. When there, are, when there are challenges. Stepping up in every area so that you are not an easy prey to all kinds of people. Now, please, I, I, I want us to, to realize that God really wants to help us, as, as, especially as women. If he says that uh, we are the weaker vessel, he, he wants to help us as women. Go to Jeremiah chapter 10. Verse 23. It says, Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. In the Living Bible, it says, Lord, I know it is not within the power of man to map his life and to plan his course. Lord, I know it's not in the power of man to map his life and to chart his course. There is none of us here that can say, I know tomorrow. There is none of us here that know, say, I know what will happen tomorrow. Unless the proclamation we make in faith. He says it's not in man to map his, 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 his way. To chart his course. If I don't have the power to chart my course, what weapon has God put in my hand to make sure that my future arrives the way God planned it to arrive? What weapons has God given us as his daughters so that things don't just happen to us unceremoniously? And we just accept it. And one of those weapons is the weapon of his word. Building our lives on the word of God. Building our lives systematically. Building our faith. Building our faith as women. Do you know that? One of the things I have endeavored to do. Because Kenneth Hagin teaches on faith. I sat down. I read and read and read and read and read Kenneth Hagin. Read and I always tell people, anywhere you see Kennedy Hagin material, sit down and read it. The Bible says there is a rest for the people of God. There is a rest that God wants to bring every woman. But to enter that rest, there is something you must do. 
And one of those things is for you to step up, just sitting down to build your faith in the word of God, reading books that will make you step up in your faith. It's not in my hand to direct my path, but God has given us weapons. And one of those weapons is the weapon of waiting on the Lord as well. Waiting on the Lord. When was the last time that you really heard a woman say, this matter that is on ground, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait on the Lord concerning this matter. Because many times now, because of these motivational speakers, and then people who know how to visit prophets, okay, I'm going to make that prophet pray. So many times people don't know the value of personally taking time to say, I want to wait on the Lord. Something happened to the Israelites when they were, uh, they entered the promised land under the leadership of Joshua. The Bible says God already gave them instruction that as you are going to this promised land, make sure, make sure that you don't make any uh, treaty. Don't enter into alliance with any of the people of that, the citizens of that country. So the Bible says there were some people, the Bible calls them the Gibeonites. You can see the story in Joshua chapter 9. The Gibeonites, they came pretending to be from a far country. They wore old clothes. They put, in fact, those people acted drama that day. Their bread, they, they made sure the bread was stale. Their water bottle, they dry it as if they are coming from wilderness sins. Then they came to Joshua and the elders said, we are from a very far country. And we have heard how God is with you people. We want you to, to enter into alliance with us. We will not trouble you people at all. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that these men of Israel, if it was Moses, the first thing he would have done is say, okay, you people are welcome. Please, give them somewhere to stay. Let me go and ask God. But the Bible says that as those people were talking, talking, pressing, 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 the men of Israel did not bother to ask from the mouth of God. And you know that that decision they made, they now took the, uh, the bread, the people brought all their peace, uh, this thing, they entered alliance with them and decided that we, we are brothers for life. That decision they made cost Israel three years of farming, 300 years later. Just a simple decision. A simple decision because they refused to step up to say, let me even find out what does God want. Please listen to me, sisters. We are in a supernatural world. Whether you like it or not, we live in a spiritual world. This world is controlled from the spirit realm. And many times, there are things that will happen that the devil has programmed some people to come and push you into certain decisions and alliances. And you as a woman cannot just blindly just be entering. Somebody just can say, make we go a bar market. You just follow the person. That's how all your capital lost. Another person comes and says, ah, let's go like this. You just went. Which decision have you made that you really stepped up to God and said, God, I really need your counsel in this matter. I'm not going to take a step until I hear from heaven. May I tell you, sisters, that your spiritual development can never, never, never be removed from how serious you take the issue of waiting on the Lord. You know, that time I, I just got born again. The brother who was following me up, one of the things he taught me, which I am so grateful to him, is that as a believer, every week you must have a day to fast. How old are I? I was 20 years. Which problem I get? No problem. But he said you need to learn it. You remember that day when uh, Jesus went up to the mountain and was transfigured. That one man had brought his uh, child that was demon possessed. And the, the disciples have done all kinds of kokoma, kokoma. They couldn't cast out the demon. And then Jesus just came. And within a twinkle of eye, he cast out the demon. When they went into the closet, the disciples said, excuse me sir, you need to explain this. Why could we not cast out this demon? What was the deficiency? And Jesus said to them, he said, this type cannot come out except by prayer and fasting. Listen to me, dear sisters. There are certain issues in your life that cannot be resolved without prayer and fasting. There are certain issues in your life that cannot be resolved if you are not going to take time to say, let me even go and wait on the Lord. What is this thing about? 
some of you there are some there are issues that you have tried everything the thing refused to go one thing you have not tried is personally going to wait on the lord you know the the children of israel had a problem and what was their problem god said to them he said uh, he told moses he said tell the children of israel to come up to the mountain i want to talk to them and then they fixed a date god said three days let them wash their garments let them sanctify themselves the third day they came when they came that third day the bible says when they saw the mountain smoking they saw fire they saw thunder ah the bible said the people began to run then they turned to moses they said excuse me sir the thing about it is that we don't mind we cannot face this kind of god you go to god whatever god tells you come and tell us we will do it i normally call those people those that wait on them that wait on the lord they will not wait on the lord for themselves they want other people to wait on the lord then they will come and wait on those who wait on the lord i went to church one day many years ago i wasn't i don't think i was married so that must be over 30 years ago here came this sister to me said sister vera i said yes he said the lord says something i said what did he say he said he said he will tell you something to tell me I said, I don't understand that kind of long communication line. God said, we tell me something to tell you. He didn't tell me anything to tell you. You see, that is the reason why there is a lot of prophet lying. You know why there's a lot of prophet lying? If you see my face, I will prophesy. God doesn't talk like that. But you see, because she was too lazy to take time to go and wait on the Lord for herself, because it might take some days. It might take weeks. And she's not ready to do that. She's too busy with mundane things. She's too busy with natural things. So, I beg, I beg, I beg. All those kind saying, I'm waiting on the Lord. I will not be able to do it. I will not be able to do it. And the next thing, she's coming to meet me. Say, God said, he will tell you something to tell me. So, what are we saying? Sisters, sisters, this month of May, God is saying you need to step up. You need to step up in your spiritual life. But specifically, you need to step up in the art of waiting on the Lord. In the art of waiting on the Lord. And please, I want us to know that many times, because this thing doesn't appear to be easy, we we postpone it. If I'm not going to embarrass anybody here, if I wanted to ask this morning, because I know that every one of us, there's one issue or the other that we are dealing with in our lives. Have you waited on the Lord concerning that issue? Have you stepped up in the realm of the spirit concerning that issue? To say, Lord, I don't know what's going on now, but this matter, I will not leave you until something happens. Ken Hagen was telling the story of a young man a, not so young, a, a man who came to his meeting and he was teaching on how to hear from God. And you know that is one major problem in Christianity. Many Christians don't know how to hear from God. So he was teaching along that line how to hear from God. So this man at that time, his business was almost fin- he was fin- he was going to file for bankruptcy. So when he was listening to the teaching, listening to the teaching, he said, my God. So this is why I've been missing it. So he said that was the day, the day he made up his mind. That he will never make any business decision without first of all asking God whether that's the direction he wanted. He said, so when a proposition comes for business, he will not make, say yes or no. He said, just give me some time. He will enter his closet. He said, sometimes one day, sometimes two days, sometimes three days. Just praying praying in other tongues, worshipping God, asking, oh God, what do you want me to do about this matter? He said, until it is clear in his heart, the direction God wanted him to go, he will never step to say this or that. And he said, in the past, he was now, this brother was testifying, because the time he's testifying, now he's now a multi-millionaire. He said, what changed it, is that in the past several years, when he started practicing that, he has never lost one penny in any business transaction. He has never lost one penny in any business transaction. Because he knew, he learned how to transact business in the realm of the spirits. He learned how to take things from the natural realm. 
Please, if you walk in the natural realm, the devil will defeat you. Because the Bible says he's the God of this world. If you walk in the natural realm, the, the devil will defeat you. The realm where you will walk. You are a young girl, you are not yet married. Have you taken time instead of saying, oh, every time we pray this, let's bombard heaven, let's bombard heaven, let's bombard heaven, let's bombard heaven. It's not heaven that is the... I wish you would take time to ask God, God, what is the... Why am I not married? And you will stay there until you get an answer. I wish you would go and ask God, God, I have been married how many years? Why don't I yet have a child? You see, the issue is that it's not as if God is not speaking. But the issue is that God's people are not serious enough to hear what he wants to say. The challenges of our lives will come. That's what the Bible says. Challenges will come. The issue is, are we ready to step up to see how those challenges can be resolved in our lives? So many decisions that we make in our lives without asking God have landed us in a lot of troubles in our lives. One, one sister was saying to me, say, Pastor, even this man, when I go marry, not be my stubbornness, not be my stubbornness, now my stubbornness put me for this one. Eh? Suppose I even take time to even pray one serious prayer. I for even know say, nah, Christ, man, I won't marry. And truly, the man is a Christ man. No, even without missing words. Without missing words. The man is a Christ man. How will a Christian sister who has been in church for years end up marrying a madman? I mean a madman. How did it happen? Because we, we, we take decision making too lightly. We are not ready to step up and say, God, until I get your direction, who am I to direct myself? Who am I to know what to do? concerning this matter. Your husband is misbehaving. You have not gone to God and said, God, this man that is misbehaving, how do you want us to handle it? You go and fight with girlfriend. You go and run here like this. You are, you are doing, you reporting here, reporting here. All the reports you have reported him. What has it changed? Nothing. In fact, eh, like the woman with the issue of blood, it's rather growing worse. It's going worse. But if we are women of wisdom. One of the things that we will find out in our lives is that God is more than willing and able to help us. You remember that in Jeremiah chapter 9, you know, there is something that God has given us as women that men don't have. Unfortunately, many of us women, we are not using it. There was a problem in Israel. You know what the prophet said? God told the prophet, he says, send for the willing women. You see, as women, eh, you know, before small things, our eyes are full with tears. I don't know if there's any woman here who doesn't cry. Eh? Let me come and teach you how to cry. It is natural. It is not tears is natural with us. In fact, my own, eh? I feel cry for the whole state. Want something touch me emotionally. So tears is normal with us. But the only sad thing is that many of us we are not applying our tears in the right direction. The prophet sent, uh, the God told the prophet, send for the wailing women. Let them come and wail and mourn for the land so that I can reverse this calamity. Let me reverse this calamity. But many times when you want to cry, where do you cry? You are feeling sorry for yourself. You are in self-pity. You lock yourself in your room. Oh my God, oh, my life can't be like this. You are wasting your tears. You are wasting your tears. Those tears can fetch you better results than they are fetching you. You are wasting your tears. If you look at scriptures, this gift that God has given us is not something that we should waste at all. It's something that God wants us to use and to use it very, very well. Genesis 25. Genesis 25, Rebecca get married as other women were getting married. As other women were getting married though, that's how this girl get, got married. In fact, she was minding her business when they came, sent messenger to come and look for wife for Isaac. They, if you see bride price, they paid. If you see the wedding ceremony, it was the talk of the town. Happily, this girl was going to marry. They carried her. She got, and then she found a husband who even loved her. So, beautiful marriage. Before her koro koro eye, this month passed, no pregnancy. Next month passed, no pregnancy. One year passed. I don't know how many years 
this girl sat down. Ha! One day, she said, Enough is enough. Unfortunately for her, she didn't know to whom to cry. Instead of to go to her God who releases children, who did she go and cry to? Her husband. He said, Give me children, or I will just die. I will die for this. I'm tired. <laughs> I can add the drama of crying because I shall be crying. When you, when you put the cry into a chair and you are feeling that if I really cry, my husband will go sorry for me. If I really cry, this man will change. All those cry you have cried. Did the man change? If he is a man that has soft heart self and as I will just say, okay now, nah, it's okay, it's okay, I will try, I will try, I will try. The man tried to try, but he couldn't change. Then, when the cry became too much, thank God that God had mercy on Rebecca. The husband now said, okay, since I have a, a wife who doesn't know where to direct her cry, let me help her go to God. So the Bible says the husband went to God and went to pray. Oh God, oh God, please open the womb of my wife. We must have a child, we must have a child. And the Bible says God heard him. And the woman got pregnant. I saw that woman, the girl, Bele, and I this girl, girl Bele. But this her Bele was a different Bele. From day one, trouble. I mean, from day one, trouble. Then they say, now so it they be, now so it they be, your body goes so adjust. The thing was, when the children started to kick, eh? Maybe, whether they were playing football in her stomach or whether it was Ted, this girl couldn't understand again. Do you know what she did? If it's today, you know what we will do? What do you think we will do? We are going for a scan. Let's go and check. I thank God for technology. I'm very grateful for technology that you can know whether it's boy you want to born or girl you want to born. You can know many, many things. Eh? But many times, our confidence now is too much in technology. We are missing many things. The Bible says this girl, when she saw the situation, she knew that this one, crying to my husband, will not solve the matter now. My husband does not have anything to say, but cannot explain. The Bible says she now carry herself to God. And say, God, you that put these children in my stomach, Father, what is going on? She went and inquired of the... Excuse me, sister. You don't get miscarriage one time. You don't get miscarriage two times. Instead of crying, why don't you do like Rebecca? He went to God. God, what is going on? This time, she wasn't saying, I bind the devil, I lose the devil, I chain the devil, I unchain him. You know, some of us, we chain him, we lose him, we tie him, we... Ah, the devil self confused. He said, choose one, choose one, make her know what to do. <laughs> Just one, make her know what to do. Do you know? As this woman was there asking God, all of a sudden, Old Testament, oh, not be now that Holy Spirit is here, you are speaking in tongues every minute. Old Testament, the Bible said God started speaking to her. Two nations are inside that your womb. Ah, nations. Two people shall be separated from the womb. The older shall serve the younger. Suppose it was Khan. You know the technologists will only tell you that, madam, congratulations. You are going to have two boys. Am I right? You are going to have two boys. But when she went to inquire of God, God was not speaking of boys. Two nations. God was speaking about a distant future to come. Do you know that if we would take time to seek the face of God and step up in that area, there are many things God will reveal to you. There are many things God will reveal to you. There are many of you sitting down here. Do you know in 19... When I got born again in 1986, 33 years ago yesterday. In 1987, I went for youth service. So, I think this was now... That 87, 88, during youth service. They started teaching us about the purpose of God, destiny, your assignment on the earth. I said, ah, ah. So, there's something like this again. So, I decided, I said, God, I am not going to assume... That because I went to school, read English education, I must be a teacher. Father, what is your destiny? Three days of fasting. This one, I didn't go and ask my pastor, what do you think uh, God wants to do with my life? It's not my pastor's business. 
I didn't go and ask my mother, when you get my belly, did God tell you anything? I went to the one who releases destiny. I said, God, show me. What is it? Why am I on earth? You know what I did? God gave me wisdom. I was a young convert, but God gave me wisdom. First day, I was just worshipping God. And that worship, I don't know if I've ever experienced worship like that again. Because as I went into that worship, it was my friend's house. As I just entered into that realm of worship, all of a sudden, the roof. I couldn't see the roof again. I was right in the presence of God. And you know, that time in the fellowship, we were thinking that we were the very spiritual, you know, we were the ones who could pray. We were the didaskelos of the fellowship. The, 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 the executives. When I, you know what happened to Isaiah and Isaiah, Isaiah 6, brethren, happened to me. Isaiah saw the glory of God. Read Isaiah 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Isaiah was, eh, what are you? What are you? What are you? What are everybody? Isaiah 6. God opened eye of Isaiah. The Bible says when he saw the Lord. Isaiah not think of another person. Say, what is me? Oh my God, brethren. If God gives you entrance into his presence, you will know that you are indeed a woman of unclean lips. And you dwell among people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the Lord, even the King of Israel. And do you know that after that day, the second day, I was still praying, praying the Spirit, praying in my understanding, oh God, you know why I'm here. I want to understand what your purpose is. Entered into third day of fasting. That third day, the Lord began to speak to me. And that defined the whole direction of my life. I have called you and was, it's my personal issue. I don't need to go to details. But do you know that as soon as God told me that, it, it, it defined the course of my life. When God had a powerful destiny for Samson, and this happens to everybody that God has a high purpose for. Before Samson was born, he told the mother, this child must never drink alcohol. Did he say so? This child must never cut his hair. This child must not go near a dead body. He was giving him issues of consecration. Issues of consecration. Do you know the reason why God finds it difficult to reveal his heart to many people? They just want God to speak. They are not ready for the issues of consecration. As a woman, I don't want you to make those kind of friends again. But he said, ah, if I leave them now, how will it now be? So you are in Seven Sisters Club of Nigeria. And God is saying, how does she want me to speak to her inside that club? How does she want me to speak to her inside that club? Oh God, speak to me. Speak, you know, excuse me. And let me inform you very seriously. That for everybody who is serious to say, God, I really want to understand your will and I want to walk listening to you God must demand consecration from your life there are certain things other people may do that he will not permit you to do if you are not ready for that go the day something decided that those consecration was too much for him he went to start eating uh, honey from dead body God did not fight with him he left that one he, what was the other one? Drinking uh, all kinds of things in the name of a uh, marriage that he went to contract with Philistines. God did not argue with him until he was just playing dancing kokoma around the last consecration. If you just cut my hair, I will be weak. I will become like other men. As soon as that one gone, that was the end for him. That was the end for him. Please listen to me. Do you know that when this woman went to God and said, God, what is going on inside my womb? I don't understand. Two nations are in your womb. God wants to show you things in the future. I was listening to a woman the other time. Before she even got pregnant, God already told her that she was going to have a girl and that this girl will marry so and so person and so and so person. And then when the child was born, she started praying. God told her the name of the husband of that child. And you know that that's the person the, the girl married. When I hear that kind of story, I feel a bit embarrassed. I wish 
probably had heard those ones earlier. But thank God, some of you, you are hearing it early enough. But you see, the only issue this morning, as a woman, are you going to step up? Because you see, it will take some efforts. I wish it can just happen normally. But some of you, instead of waiting on the Lord, you want to watch Telemundo. You cannot watch Telemundo and get this at the same time. You cannot watch Z World morning to evening, watch home video, and then somehow be walking in the spirit. Was it last month we went to we went to um, Edwin Clark University to preach? Usually, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't watch television, unless sparingly, once in a while. Then there's one show I like, and that is always currently. A crime and investigation because sometimes I just look at the wickedness of human being how they can plan kill somebody just I don't know if some of you saw one was have something going on 17 year old boy went with his friends for party and this boy was the one who paid the gate fee for them to go and swim 2,000 for those boys CCTV caught everything this boy was drowning his friends were gisting. When one of them said, let's rescue him, I said, no, let's not really own too much, you shall carry too much. They do something because he just say, Papa, get money. As soon as the boy drowns, one took his shoe, one took his shirt, one took his handset, and they ran away. If not for CCTV, nobody would have known. So sometimes I like, the wickedness of man is intriguing. And some of you, because you don't know that we live in a very wicked world, and the only realm at which you can succeed and fight the battle is from the spiritual realm. That's why you think that television is very important to your destiny. It's not. It's not important to where you are going, my sister. It's not. So the Bible says this woman was crying to the Lord, and the Lord said, Two nations are in your womb. And then, of course, she already knew. And that was why when they were now born, and the, the man wanted to give the blessing to the wrong person, you remember. The man who didn't ask God wanted to carry blessing to give to the wrong person. She find a way, find a way to collect the blessing, give the person when God already show and say, "Now this boy, now be the, the the senior will serve him." Praise God! I said, "Praise God!" Do you know that this was also the secret of David? Please turn your Bibles. Go to Psalm twenty-seven. Psalm twenty-seven. Psalm 27, I want you to look at verse 8. Psalm 27, verse 8. It says, When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Say, when God said, Seek my face, even me, I replied, Lord, I will seek your face. I'm not going to, I'm not going to seek another thing. I will seek your face. I'm not going to seek the face of a man. I will seek your face. And so, one day, David was in a big problem. Philistines were coming against them. Please, let's read that story quickly. First Samuel chapter 23. First Samuel 23. Look at verse 1. I'll read verse 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then, they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Keilah, and they rob the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto him, Go and smite the Philistines and save Killer. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we come to Killer against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Killer, for I will deliver the Philistines into thy hand. So David and his men went to Kila and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Kila. What is this place? Trouble had come. Sister, when trouble comes, what is your first reaction? David did not just say, hey, I'm a man of war. I know what to do. I know how to hunt. The Bible says the first thing that David did was that he went to inquire of the Lord. You see, he went to ask God, God, what, how do you want us, what do you want us to do? Should I go and fight? And God said, go. It was clear, go. 
But as David was trying to summon his men, okay, God said we should go and fight. They said, ah, ah, I beg, I beg, I beg. Even here that we are in Judah, we are afraid that we are going to go into the midst of the enemy. I beg, please. Do you know sometimes you may hear from God about something. If you go to ask counsel from people, they may want to discourage you. Am I right? No. As they want to discourage you, it is not for you first of all to be discouraged or for you to say, no, I'm going. God will not be annoyed if you come back and say, I don't know if I hear well, well that time. Oh, Father, please, can you say again what you want us to do? Can you say again what you want us to do? And the Bible says, when they asked of the Lord again, God said, go. And David said, yeah, everybody, let's move and go. And they went and they won the battle. Do you know that we don't have time? A short while later, there was another battle coming. If David was some people, David would say, the other time when I asked God, he said, let us go. No need to ask him again. Let's just be going. Let's just be going. The one he said that time is enough. And that is where some of us make mistakes. Maybe at one time, you saw the face of God concerning something. You got direction. Then another situation came again. And then you just say, I know what to do. In the midst of the battles that the children of Israel faced, there were battles that God said, um, don't go. Um, go and besiege the city. Other places he said, don't take a step. You will hear a noise on top of the mulberry trees. When you hear that noise, the armies of the angels are already going ahead. Follow them behind. God gives specific instructions for our lives. The only problem with this generation of Christians and especially Christian women is that we are lazy to handle spiritual things. We are lazy to handle spiritual things. We are lazy to handle spiritual things. I wish there are women in this place today who will say, Lord, this month of May and onwards, if I pray small a day, let it be 30 minutes, let it be one hour, if I didn't pray at all, And if I didn't fast, let it be at least once a week. And honestly, once a week is enough. Even if I couldn't fast the whole day. But at least, let me know that I was on a fast. I skipped one meal, I skipped two meals, and I was praying. And when there are issues, I don't run up and down. I go to seek the face of God and say, God, what do you want me to do? I wish there are women who will rise from here like that. You would see many situations change in your life. There's one woman, is a pastor. Uh, what's her name? She's, uh, she's in the U.S. So she had breast cancer. When she had this breast cancer, they went from hospital to hospital. They told her that the thing has spread. No way. And she said, in fact, the breast eh, has started falling. You won't even understand. I had a friend who died of breast cancer. So I know it's horrible breast don't first of all strong like a wood. Then the next thing, this woman, the first time when they think it, they said they should cut the breast. Ah, no, 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 no. How can she have only one breast? Only the cancer cut away the breast. Turned to a big hole. So this thing was already falling like this. Sisters, if you don't pray, eh, you don't know what you are doing to yourself because challenges, this life is full of challenges. This life is full of challenges. She said, you know what? She decided that, okay, the hospital have already said no hope. What will she do? She decided every day she will take communion. Every day she will take communion. Pray and then begin to declare the word of God over her, over her health, over her life. So sometimes she started using breast pad because of blood coming so before you know, breast pad is full. She's changing the bra. She's washing the bra. She's making declaration. As I'm speaking to you now, the woman is still preaching because before she knew it, her breast was torn. Everything cleared up. Everything cleared up. There is power with our God. See, if you, if you don't see the power of God in any generation, it's because God did not find people that can reach out to him. God did not find people that can reach out to him. God is an all-powerful God. And your problem is too small for him to handle. Your problem is too small. But the only thing many times, we are not taking time. 
We are not taking time. I wish there are women here who will take time. You find out that not only will your own personal problems be resolved, God will use you to be resolving people's problems. Problems of cities. Problems of nations. Amen. I said amen. Amen. I said amen. Amen. No one sister was sharing testimony. You know she was, uh, she's an American, so she, God gave her body to pray for a particular country. So she has been praying for them, praying for them, praying for them. So one night, as she was praying, she felt her spirit traveling to that country. She went into one place where they were planning terrible thing against the church in that country. So she was praying and praying and praying. So when she came back to herself, she wasn't sure again whether it was a dream, whether it was this thing. Then in the morning, as she gathered her things, she wanted to wash her clothes. She started, you know, she, you know, American, they use coins. Let me remove coins before I put uh, this thing into the washing machine. She saw some coins. Ah, ah, they were not American coins. She was wondering. Then she went to find out it was the money that they used in that country she went it's as if God deliberately put those coins in her pocket for you to know that that thing was not a dream. You see, there are high plans and high, there are things that God wants, serious things God wants to do with your life if you will only step up. If you will only step up. And I keep saying this, you only have one life to live. Let your life count for something serious. Let your life count for something serious. Your children are depending on you. Even your husband. Some of you, if I ask you here, whether your husband they pray, make we not go there. Some of you say, eh, "Let us pray." Say, "Be praying." I'm coming, sisters. Am I talking? How many of you are married here? Let me see the married sisters, please. Uh-huh. So many. You know what I'm saying? Please. How many of you here? Your husband is a prayer warrior. Let me see. Your husband is a prayer warrior. Thank God. We and please, I want you to not discourage the man because you are blessed. You are blessed too. If you have a man that is a prayer warrior, you are blessed. For those of you that your husbands are not prayer warriors, you better get up. Even you that your husband is a prayer warrior, you get up. Now, so I want to give you four points before we, we pray. If I want to wait on the Lord, what should I do? Don't wait until there is a problem. Form it as a habit. Number one, pick a season, maybe a day, two days, three days, that you really want to take time to engage with God. Pick a season where you want to take time to engage with God. Can be a day, say, Lord, I'm locking myself with God today. Two days, three days, you just want to, you know, I've been telling um, my PA for some time, say, I really need a serious retreat. I'm walking towards it. Yeah. I do this um, weekly. I try to just, you know, but long stretched out retreats where I'm really seeking God's face. I need that. I need that because there are some issues I must clarify. I was telling them the story the other time of a young man. He was, he's now an old man. He's now 72. But that time he was in his um, 20s or early 30s. So that day, he was preaching when the Lord was moving his heart to wait on the Lord. And sometimes he said, God will be the one to say, come, come. And when God said, come, who are you to say, I'm too busy? He said, so, as, so he announced in the, in the program, he said, please, I'm sorry, this is the last time you'll see me in this program. For I, There's something I need to clarify with God. There's some serious issues I need to sort out. So he left. So he and his wife, they went to the hotel to pray. So after three days, as he was coming out, he met a man. And the man said to him, Ah, young man, please, uh, how are you? They started talking. He said, I heard you when you said that there are some things you want to clarify with God. He said, when you made that statement, I went to ask God. God put a body in my heart. I went to ask God, what is that man asking you for, Lord? And the Lord said to, told this man that I have called him to do so and so and so many. This man was already a minister. But I want him to be an itinerant minister. Okay, going to campuses and doing that. But he's, he's, he's not sure 
Uh-huh. And he needs um, $50,000 to be able to start it. Go and give him the $50,000. So he told this man, said, God said, I should give you the $50,000. The man said, ah, I can't take that money. You don't know me. I don't know you. The man was insisting. He said, okay, let's fix another meeting. They fixed another meeting. So they went for that meeting. Both wives were there. And they started talking. Well, they concluded I gave the man the $50,000. And this man started that itinerary ministry. Right now, he has 70 um, um, teachers under him. They go from campus to campus, all over the Middle East, all over Asia, um, America, um, the UK, all those places. Because of the contention against the gospel in those places. But do you know that if not that he took time to go and wait on the Lord, he foresee the fifty thousand dollars, he would have been there. And say, ah, something just in my mind. Some of you, some business have been in your mind for years. You didn't go and ask God. You thought it was your own business. So you are looking for who to go and beg to give you the money to do the business. I wish you would go to the one who put the business in your heart and say, God, this thing you put in my heart, how how will it happen? And He might show you the direction to go. Praise God. And so the first thing is to choose a day. The second thing is to choose a place. A place. Is it going to be in your house? Is it going to be in church? Is it going to be, are you going to go to the hotel? Are you going to go somewhere quiet? But you must have a place. And the reason why this is important is that when you are seeking God, you don't need distraction. When you are seeking God, you don't need distraction. Of course, if you are a married woman with young children, you might not be, and you don't have somebody to take care of your children, you might not be able to leave the house. Then you will now deliberately program yourself, if you work, probably take leave from work, so that when your children are in school, you make sure you put it during school time. When your children are in school, that how many hours before they come back, you will engage it with God. When they come back, you continue your mama role. Then, when they go to school tomorrow, you continue what you are doing with God. But that a month will pass, two months will pass, you are not engaged with God at this level, you will not go far. You must step up. You must step up. You will not go far. Not just spiritually, but even in other areas of your life. So you choose a time, you pick a place, and then when you are in that place, you switch off your phones. You don't want distraction. Let me say, I'm, let me I just quick check Facebook. Make I just quick check YouTube. Make I just quick check. You switch off your phones. You don't want distraction. You are in the presence of the great king. How dare you allow interruptions at that kind of critical time? So I don't know. Somebody may just call me. Somebody important. You have been waiting for a potter call all these years. You never see him. So it's only these three days you wanted to wait on the Lord now that that's a call. And do you know that a call that is a blessing from heaven, that you are waiting on God, will not, if the person try, 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 he will still come. Amen. And you find out that we miss a lot because we will not even switch off our phones. And it's very, very sad that sometimes a woman will go to church, phones are switched off, they make call, they answer call. You see, the depth of reverence we give to God is so important. A, a man of God, big man of God in America, went, had audience with the president. Had audience with the president. And he had put something in his pocket. So a paper that I wanted to be looking to discuss. So as he just entered into the president's uh, this thing, as he wanted to start, as his hand was going towards the pocket, if you see rushing of all those his uh, guards, the man was embarrassed. It's against protocol. You can't be in the presence of the president and you want to put your hand in your pocket. Ordinary president. And we are talking about the king of all kings and the lord of all lords. There are many things we do that we don't know that they are dishonoring. You are praying. That's when your phone was ringing. You say, God, excuse me, one minute. Hello, hello. I they pray, I they pray. I will call you back. And you know, sometimes it's still out of this cell for people to really know that you are a prayer warrior. Maybe I know, say, I was praying. And they pray, and they pray. I'll call you, I'll call you, I'll call you. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Father. And you know, by the time you are coming back, the zeal for the prayer has gone. Because, God said, what kind of thing is this? What you cannot do 
before your president. You cannot do even before a small local government chairman. Then you are before Almighty God. Switch off your phones. Switch off your phones. Then, in that place as well, please don't be in a hurry. Don't give God time to say this thing when I won't ask you so. I didn't see where Rebecca said, God, two days now I won't spend here. If after these two days I don't hear from you, I'll go marry the man like that too. Do not tell me your mind. I'll go marry the man like that. <laughs> Who will suffer the suffer? God will see the heaven will be God. Uh-huh. It's you that will suffer. So don't give God, don't, don't give God timing. Don't be in a hurry. Just be open to him and allow him lead you. Amen. I just pray that this message is helping somebody. Is it helping anybody? Then, pray in the spirit. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, please spend time to pray in the spirit. When you are sitting down, you get tired, you stand, you walk around. You are getting tired, you lie down on the ground, face your face before the Lord. Oh, Brazika, Barush, Kembado, Zebra, De Kashaya. Apostle Paul said, I will pray in the spirit, I will pray in my understanding also. I will sing in the spirit, I will sing in my understanding also. Oh, Zebra, De Kashara, Bakada, Saida. You see, the beautiful thing about praying in the spirit is the fact that your spirit is stirred up. Because the spirit of God dwells in your spirit. He said, if I pray in an unknown tongue, the spirit of God within me prays. He said, we don't even know how, what we ought to pray for as we ought. But that the Holy Ghost helps our infirmities by helping us pray in language that we cannot articulate in human speech. So you pray in the spirit, you pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in your understanding, pray in the spirit, pray in your understanding, and please write it down, worship. Worship is key when you are waiting on the Lord. Worship is key when you are waiting on the Lord. Daniel was in captivity. And the captivity was long. 70 long years. You know, 70 years of slavery. You know that there are some people who were born and died in that slavery. Am I right? 70 years. People were born and died in that slavery. One day... Daniel was reading through the books and he found out there is really no need for this. God said the, because of the wickedness of these people I will take them to Babylon for 70 years. 70 years is over God. Why? And the Bible says he started to pray. I don't think Daniel made up his mind that see, I'm going to uh, fast for 21 days if you are reading your Bible. The Bible says when he started praying he was expecting that probably the first day we get an answer. There was no answer. Second day, you will get an answer. No answer. Third day, 21 days. Until the, who knows if Daniel would have even stopped till 40 days. His own is that, God, until you speak, I'm, I'm not living here. When the angel came, what did he say? How Daniel, a man greatly beloved. The first day you started praying, your prayer registered in heaven. No? So don't think that God didn't hear you. And the answer was already dispatched. But the prince of Pesha was standing to hinder. And God had to dispatch warring angel to go and dispatch that prince of Pesha before the answer could come after 21 days. That is why you cannot afford to be in a hurry. Say, God, this one, I beg. I don't, I, 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 three days, nothing. Even if you will not be fasting, can I again said God told him something because he used to fast twice a week, every Tuesday and every Thursday. He said, but God spoke to him that instead of all this fasting, 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 don't fast again. I want you to live a fasted life. And he said he has never heard such a thing. Which one is a fasted life? And God told him, say, okay, you will not fast or you will fast on Tuesday, you fast on Thursday. Then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, you will eat over belly food. He said, instead, don't ever eat to be satisfied. And once in a while you skip a meal or two. Live a fasted life where your spirit is always... You know when you overeat, your body weighs down your spirit. And some of you, you have that problem of overeating. That's why you are so heavy. If you don't want to be heavy, eat less. Eat less. And do you know that as you are in that state, you pray, 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 nothing is coming. Go about your business. But you keep praying until there is an answer. 
Amen. Amen. I said amen. amen. Some people call it operation push. Pray until something happens. Until there is a word from heaven. Please wait on the Lord until there is a word from heaven. Alright, so let me end with Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Give me Isaiah 40 verse 31. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Can we all read it together, everybody? Please listen to me. I cannot deceive myself to say everybody here we go and do what the Spirit of God is saying this morning. I will really be deceiving myself. But I know that there are some people here this morning that God has spoken to. You want to renew your strength. You really want to step up in life. You want to step up. Where forces of darkness cannot pull you down. No matter how hard they try. You can't do it without waiting on the Lord. You can't do it without waiting on the Lord. Sisters, you can't do it without waiting on the Lord. And do you know the height of your spirituality is going to be tied to this? It's going to be tied to this. It's possible that there are some issues in your life you've prayed about. And you have gotten to the point and say, ah, God, not the answer. I want you to, between now and when we come next month, take that issue again back to God. And instead of now asking God to do that thing for you, go to God and ask him why he hasn't done it. Am I making sense? Don't go and say, oh, Father, oh, Father, this is my husband that is not doing well. Father, change him. Change. Don't ask him. Like, don't pray like that again. Say, Father, I've been praying concerning this, my husband. What are you saying about it? What are you saying about it? Go. It's called inquiring prayer. Prayer where you are going to inquire from the Lord. Many people don't know how to pray inquiring prayers. You are going to ask God. God questions. Like Rebecca, Father, why? Probably there are certain things in your life that have been happening. You have not been able to get explanation. Between now and next month, go and, go and, go and ask the Lord. And you know that the Lord is going to speak to you. Amen. I said amen. amen. I want us, don't stand up, but I want us to take a few minutes to pray. Keep your book on one side. A woman that will not pray, eh? Is going to have a lot of issues that she cannot resolve. You know that him, what a friend we have in Jesus. He said, Oh, what? Oh, what? Things we often, okay. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. Why? Oh, because we will not carry everything to God in prayer. Call for the morning women. Call for the wailing women. Let them come. So as you sit down, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to lift up your hands where you are. Just pray in the Spirit. As loud as you can pray in the Spirit. As loud as your voice can go at this, mo at this moment. Just pray. I can't hear people praying. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. As loud as you can pray. Let it come from your heart. Lift up your voice. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Basu brade kashandea. Brada ke ka prade janda ya bakuri basenda ye masu prade ka bashanda rabalo soke mbala de zeka zi prade ke bande ji prade ka bahada danda riba su prade ke shinda ye da paranda ke barus kande tu sanda ye ka prade ka sharima kando sakada mam prade baba rike ntaliba da prada ko jande riba los ke banda shida masu prade ka banga ya da su prade ka o bakada Take it up a little bit. Take it up. Step it up. Step it up. Step it up. Let it come out of your spirit. Let it come out of your spirit. Let it come out of your spirit. If you don't pray in tongues, I want you to just ask God, Father, help me to step up in the spirit. As you pray, if you feel like standing up, you can stand. As you pray, if you feel like standing up, you can stand. If you feel like moving around, you can move around. I want some women who can turn to 
mountains in the spirit to begin to grow in the spirit. I want some women that have some fire in their bones to begin to pray. Masu brade ka shandara ba maso ba rike chedebo chali ba ba rike chedebo shandara ba ba rike chedebo jose kenda maso ba rike chedebo jose kenda paranda brade kenge yada se brade sha ba su ba rike chedebo dara ba 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 rike chedebo jose kenda mando rike chedebo shandara ba la sande maso ba rike chedebo shandaya ma rike chedebo shoro ba bo senda ya chali ba sande le bolos kenda baronde Oh God, Parada Kenzari Baba Reke Terebo, Jose Boreke Terebo, Oh God, Parada Sekaya, Bareke Terebo. I refuse to complain, oh God. I refuse to complain. I step up in the spirit. I step up in the spirit. I step up. Come on, pray some more. Pray some more. Sisters, pray some more. Pray some more in the name of Jesus. I see power being released in this place. You have given up. You have given up. And the Bible says, the Lord says, Don't give up, my daughter. Don't give up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. You have become discouraged. The Lord said, This is not the time to be discouraged. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Mandoreke Bashanda Rabalo Sandaya. Rando Riba Baseri Bashandaya. Maronde Kebradiva Sande Rebolo Sokea. Jose Boreke Jerebo Jose Kenda. Parede Keshari Baba Reke Jerebo Sundaya. Paronde Kebradiva Sanda Rabalo Sheka. Bareke Jerebo Sudia. Bareke Jerebo Jose Kebradia. In the name of Jesus. Every power that has been against your prayer life. Everybody stand up, please. Everybody stand up. This is serious. Everybody stand up. Every power. Every power, every power that has been resisting you in the place of prayer, we come against them in the name of Jesus. Every power, every power, every power, every power that has been stopping you, we stop them now in the name of Jesus. We come against the hand of the devil. We come against the hand of the devil. We resist your Satan in the name of Jesus. We resist your Satan in the name of Jesus. We bind every one of your oppression. We lose the women of God. We lose the women of God into their place in destiny. Oh, Bashanda Rabalosa. Marebo Sekeri Bashanda. Mareke Terebo Sundaya. Mareke Terebo Sundaya. Baraba Bareke Terebo Sundaya Rabalosa Kaya. Satan, you are a liar. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Listen to me, women. Listen to me, women. Listen. There may be some of you here, you have become discouraged because you have prayed and prayed over certain issues and they have not changed. I hear the Lord say, This is not the time to be discouraged. This is the time to step up. This is the time to step up. This is the time to push forward. This is the time to push forward in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is the time. This is the time in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands, everybody. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the pillar that holds my life. You are the Master Jesus. Kariba Shara Baba. Yes, Basubra de Kashara. Every every 
growth, whether fibroid, whatever be the growth in any woman's body here, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we command such growth to disappear. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we come against every cell that is not of God, every sickness that is not that is orchestrated from the kingdom of darkness. We command them to lose their hold. In the name of Jesus. Everyone here that has been laboring under the powers of darkness will come against every foul spirit sitting over the life of any woman here this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against every, every familiar spirit that has been warring against your destiny in the name of Jesus. Father, you said upon this mountain there shall be deliverance. Upon this mountain there shall be deliverance. Every power God that is holding everyone back from entering into the fullness of what you have for them. Fullness of financial breakthrough. Fullness in terms of having children. Fullness in business. Fullness in their spiritual life. Father, today we come against those powers. In the name of Jesus. We come against those powers in the name of Jesus. And every woman, God, that you have brought here this morning, thank you for grace to step up. Thank you for grace to step up. Father, before we come next month again, there will be testimonies. Before we come next month for breakfast meeting, there will be testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Some of you, you don't know how to pray. But the spirit of prayer is going to come upon you. You will no longer be a stammerer in the place of prayer. You will no longer be a stammerer in the place of prayer. You will no longer lack words in the place of prayer. The Lord will give you power and boldness. Entrance in the place of prayer. Father, thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing this. In Jesus' name we have prayed. If you know God heard your prayer, can you put your hands together and give God praise in the house of God? Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Vera Oroba has just placed in your hands the key to all-round abundance and unlimited life in Christ. Come worship with us at Morning Star Christian Center, Ephraim. God bless you.